There's not a straight line in it. It's layer upon layer of corrections, each one fitting on top of the other. Whenever he came across a problem, instead of going back to the beginning, he'd, he'd add another level of complexity. Springs working against levers, working against other springs and other levers. I mean, it's madness. Madness born of a refusal to be wrong. He couldn't just say, I've made a mistake. He'd say, I'll add something else, and it won't be a mistake. Look, can I get you something? I think I've got a bottle of sherry somewhere. Why don't you come and have a drink? No, it's all right. I'll, I'll just... I'll be all right in a minute. Well, if you're sure. I thought about you today. I thought about the first time I saw you. You'd copied out a poem of Robert Graves. I don't remember which one. You'd drawn faces all around it. And I thought, this is someone special. Not particularly because of the poem or the drawings. I don't know what I'm trying to say, really. It was a concentration, I think. There was so much noise going on around you and you paid no attention to anything except to what you were doing. And I thought, this is a man who can be anything he wants. What are you talking about? Nothing. I want you to give up the clock. I will. It's finished. Yes, I knew you'd say that. Silly of me, really. He's ready. Can you see them? Out there. Should be less than a minute now. There's the stand, too. He looks happy. What happens now? London. And then the West Indies. If it's to win the prize. Oh, God. The machine moves with an elegance in every detail that I've never seen so far. Where every action is greeted by an equal and opposite one. Come, see for yourself. Be brave, sir. It's built to withstand the greatest storms ever faced at sea. I have myself tried with the utmost vigor to disturb the motions of the balances. It is incredible. And at sea, the clock will be housed in a protective casing which will also contribute to its stability. Mr. Harrison, it seems I misjudged you when we last met. And looking at it, I perceive that I must adjust the society's clock. <laughs> How can we help you? I wish to apply for a trial at sea. Well, the Admiralty may order a sea trial. I will prepare a letter with the authority of the Royal Society. We will all sign it, testifying to what we have observed of your timepiece. Take it to the First Lord, and if you meet with success, be assured the Longitude Board will be assembled. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well Thank done. You. Thank, you. Well done. Yes. Thank you. The Board of Longitude has three elements. Academics, sailors, and politicians. Now, you've met most of the academics at the Royal Society, and they support if you can convince the Admiralty, then you have two-thirds. That only leaves the politician.
Mr. John Harrison. Good luck. Thank you. But remember, this is the Navy. <laughs> should have to order them all back. <coughs> Who the bloody hell is that? Oh, oh. Well? My lord, I come to humbly beseech you that you see fit to send my machine for determination of the longitude for trial at sea. Other ears, other ear. Bloody Spaniard did that to me. Bloody useless ever since what? It is specified by Act of Parliament that such a trial should take place on a voyage to the West Indies. This is my petition to your lordship. Mm. You a seafaring man, sir? No, sir. Pity. What? Well, I have the certificate of your mathematical friends at the Royal Society, Mr. Harrison, but I am no scientist. May I ask a simple question of you? Yes, sir. Will your machine keep its time at sea? Yes, sir. I believe it will. I have seen men die where they should not too often not to pray success for your endeavor. God's blood. It's an improvement on sticking a knife in a damn dog. Well, <laughs> Give me the Portsmouth list. I cannot promise you the West Indies, but we'll find you a ship. John, I do not ask you to be a politician. God forbid, but you must not assume that every man is your enemy. But why Lisbon? The act of Queen Anne says the trial must be to the West Indies. Be patient. The journey is short. You'll be back in less than a month if you're lucky. And if the machine performs, the board will have to order a further trial. Have you been to sea before? No. You may be glad of a quick voyage. First time, Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison requests permission to come aboard. Permission granted. Good, I'll fetch him. Steady, sir. Good oh, oh. Mr. Harrison. Lieutenant Bertie. Lieutenant. Captain Proctor presents his compliments and advises you to stow your machine in the great cabin. Has he seen it yet? I don't think so. Good. God. Does it, lads. Steady there. Please ask your men to be careful, Lieutenant. Oh, Mr. Harrison, this is the Navy. Steady there. Get that grip off her. Campbell, take Mr. Harrison to the great cabin with his clock while I report to the captain. Aye, aye, sir. This, sir, is the so-called Great Cabin, Captain Proctor's private quarters. That's when he sleeps, and in there's where he eats his supper. Smaller than I imagined. Aye, and it'll be smaller still with your machine inside it. The machine won't fit. Case is too loud. Don't worry, sir. This is a fighting ship, not a common inn. Gentlemen, will you give me action stations? Aye, aye. Mr. Harrison, you don't need a drawing room when you're fighting a battle. About to receive the Admiral's signal. Got to stand by, sir. 